This video shows how to install the outdoor unit for Ericsson Minilink TN microwave radio link equipment. We will go through the installation step by step from box to working link. For every microwave link, there are parameters that must be decided before the installation. In this case, they are printed in a site installation document. This document contains information for the installation team. For example, where to mount the outdoor unit, the antenna size and polarization. Check that you have all the information you need before you start the installation. Also have the outdoor installation instructions manual at hand. The tools you will need are 10, 17 and 18 millimeter spanner, torque wrench with 17 millimeter socket, Torx screwdriver TX20, 5 and 6 millimeter hex Allen keys, cutting pliers, a knife, and a multimeter with standard 2 millimeter test probes. An alignment port test cable is also helpful. You may need a measuring tape to find the exact mounting height. A compass and a pair of binoculars are handy when seeking the direction in which to point the antenna. Check the delivered boxes for damage. Then check the packing notes to see that the delivery is complete. Unpack and assemble the outdoor unit in a clean and dry location. It is important that dirt and moisture do not get into the equipment connectors and interfaces. The outdoor unit delivery for a link consists of the Minilink radio units. In this case, those are RAU2X units, the antennas, cables, and other ordered installation accessories. Each radio unit is delivered with a grounding cable. The two radio units are delivered as a matched pair. Each of them is identified by a subband index which is printed on the unit's labels. In this case, the frequency band is 23 GHz and the indexes are 23-A01 and 23-A05. Check the site installation document to see which unit shall be installed at which end of the link. Next, prepare the antennas. This link has two identical 0.3 meter antennas. If the two antennas are different, check the site installation document to see which one must be used for each end of the hop. Each 0.3 meter antenna comes with the antenna itself, parts for the antenna mount, the interface plate with an installation kit, and an assembly instruction. The mount allows for fine adjustment of the antenna direction after installation. Apply grease to the mount screws. Assemble the azimuth adjuster mechanism. The azimuth is adjusted with the nuts around the adjuster's center part. Place them in the middle position so you can later make adjustments in both directions. Fit the two 150 millimeter screws to the pipe clamp. Insert the pipe clamp into the elevation adjuster assembly. Fasten but not tighten the two parts together with one of the 90 millimeter screws. The antenna swings around this screw when you adjust the azimuth left and right later. Insert the azimuth adjuster in the hole of the pipe clamp. Fasten the other end of the azimuth adjuster with a 90 millimeter screw through the elevation adjuster assembly holes and through the pipe clamp's slotted hole. Fit the V-clamp bracket to the two 150 millimeter screws. The mount is fastened to the antenna with three screws.
Before you attach the mount to the antenna, apply grease to the surfaces. Install the 20mm screw first. The antenna will later swing around this screw when you adjust the elevation. Put the 30mm screw through the slot opposite the elevation adjuster mechanism. The 45mm screw is fastened through the slot in the elevation adjuster. It is by this screw the antenna is tilted when you adjust the elevation. Tighten all screws for secure transportation. Check the site installation document for the polarization of the link. It is either horizontal or vertical. For this link, horizontal polarization is specified. The polarization is set by turning the antenna feed. At delivery, the antennas are set to vertical polarization. The antenna feed is installed so that the letter V stamped on the feed is next to the mark on the reflector. If the link has vertical polarization, you can use the antenna as it is. To change to horizontal polarization, undo the four screws holding the antenna feed. Turn the feed 90 degrees to get the letter H to face the mark. Fasten the feed again. The polarization blade needs to be turned as well. The letter V is now visible through the indicator slot in the blade. Undo the two screws holding the blade and turn it to get the letter H visible through the indicator hole. Refasten the polarization blade. The antenna is now set to horizontal polarization. The antenna can be mounted either to the left or to the right of the mast. Check how each antenna will be mounted before attaching the interface plate. This antenna will be mounted to the right of the mast. Attach the interface plate so that these two hooks face downwards when the unit is installed on the mast. This way, the radio unit's handle will be upwards when it is fixed on the plate later. Fasten the interface plate with the six screws from the plate installation kit. To attach the radio unit to the antenna, make sure the surfaces are clean and dry. Remove the protection tape on both sides. The two hooks at the bottom of the radio unit connect to the hooks on the interface plate. The two screw heads holding the polarization blade act as guiding pins. The radio unit is fastened by four 6mm hex screws. Tighten them in opposite pairs. The outdoor radio unit is connected to the indoor unit by a coaxial cable, the radio cable. This is delivered on a drum. Prepare it by attaching the outdoor connector. The radio cable connector kit contains outdoor and indoor connectors, marking labels, a weatherproofing kit for the outdoor connector, and an instruction for how to attach the connectors to the cable. An N-type male connector is used for the outdoor end. Cut off the outer cable jacket to the length specified in the enclosed instruction. Cut off the dielectric and the center conductor. Stretch the shield and twist it to a pointed end. Slide on the screw and the ceiling over the jacket and the pressing cone against the jacket. Cut the shield to the specified length and fold it over the pressing cone. Trim the shield around the pressing cone. Cut off the center conductor to the specified length and remove the dielectric flush with the pressing cone.
trim the inner conductor's end. Insert the cable end into the connector body and tighten the screw. Finally, attach the protective cap. The equipment is now ready for the outdoor installation. During outdoor installations, follow the safety regulations for work at height. Check the site installation document for where and how high in the mast the radio unit assembly has to be installed. Also, look for a landmark for the direction to the other end of the link. Lift the assembly to the correct position on the mast. Secure it by rope during the installation. Measure the height if required. Fasten the V-clamp bracket around the mast and use your landmark to point the antenna towards the other end. Tighten the bracket to 38 newton meters. Connect the grounding cable from the radio unit to a grounding point on the mast. Lift the radio cable to the radio unit. Take care to avoid damage by two sharp bends. Connect the radio cable. Use an 18 mm spanner to tighten the connector. Tightening torque is 5 newton meters. Use weather and UV light resistant cable clamps to fasten the cable to the mast. The clamps used here can be delivered together with the equipment. Do not use cable straps directly to the radio cable because this may degrade the performance. Place the topmost clamp below the radio unit so the cable reaches it in smooth bends. Make sure that it is possible to adjust the direction of the antenna without causing any sharp bends or tension to the cable. Do not place any excessive cable length here. Use the weather protection kit to protect the connector from moisture and corrosion. Peel off the protection paper from the butyl sealing compound, stretch it and attach it around the connector. Make sure to completely cover the connector all the way up to the radio unit and down over the radio cable. Wrap one layer of the included PVC tape from the top of the radio connector around the butyl sealing compound in a spiral down to the cable. Finish by wrapping one more layer back up to the top. Use a knife to cut off the tape. Clamp the cable downwards along the mast. The distance between clamps must be less than one meter. Lay the cable in smooth bends. It is recommended to ground the radio cable shield before the cable enters an indoor location. Remove 20 millimeters of the outer radio cable jacket. Remove the protective paper from the earthing kit and attach it so it makes contact with the cable shield. When tightening it, make sure to get a waterproof joint. Connect the earthing kit to the local grounding system. Lay the cable to the Minilink TN indoor unit. Attach the indoor radio cable connector and connect the radio cable. Connect a laptop to the indoor unit and configure radio parameters for antenna alignment. When both Minilink TNs are active, align the antennas at the two sites. When the alignment is ready, tighten the screws holding the antenna to the mount and the screws holding the mount together. Use a torque wrench set to 38 newton meters. Then tighten the nuts for the azimuth adjustment to 10 newton meters. The link shall be operational at wind speeds up to 50 meters per second, so make sure the screws are correctly fastened. The outdoor installation is now finished and the outdoor unit is ready to be set to operational mode.